over the years. It's definitely safe to say when we've seen NBA players wear things on the court that the league did not end up liking. So much so they banned them forever, being worn in games again. It's clear that the NBA wants their players to look a certain way and not go too outside the box with their accessories. Some of these things banned are a lot more wild than others. But today, we're going to be discussing 10 accessories the NBA banned forever and the story behind them. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and join the zone right here at NBA Zone for all things basketball, chains, and jewelry. To start off, we go all the way back to the 1980s when the NBA didn't have too many regulations because they hadn't really faced many problems yet. During this time, gold chains became a signature style for many players in the league. But shortly after, the NBA banned chains from being worn because they were viewed as a safety hazard for players. Some players have worn chains in events like the dunk contest or things of that nature. But since the ban, players have not been allowed to wear their drip on the court in a game. Air Jordan 1s This might be one of the most mysterious and unknown bands of the NBA to this date. In 1984, Michael Jordan wore his first signature shoe, the Air Jordan 1s, in the black and red colorway. Now, the league hadn't really seen many shoes with black as the main color, and the league believed that these shoes did not match the Bulls' uniform, so they were banned from the NBA, along with Air Jordan 1s altogether. Of course, rules are now more lenient, and have changed being that we see players with different colored kicks all the time now. But to this day, Jordan 1 is still banned from being worn in NBA games. Might that just be another way MJ is asserting his dominance? Do-rags Now when it comes to the 2000s, a lot of accessories were banned by the league almost immediately. One of those was the do-rag. In 2000, Sam Perkins decided to wear a do-rag in his game with the Pacers, and immediately after, the league banned do-rags from being worn. The NBA said that they put a ban on do-rags because it was a safety hazard, similar to chains. However, it has been leaked since that the NBA believes do-rags violated the dress code because it represented hip-hop culture, and they did not want their league to represent that. Custom Band-Aids This one is quite different. In 2009, Dwayne Wade suffered a cut under his left eye, and the staff of the Miami Heat wanted him to cover it up in games, so D-Wade got custom Band-Aids made with his name on them to cover up his injury, but still blend in with his uniform. Well, it's safe to say that D-Wade really liked this look because he continued to wear the custom band-aids under his eye even after the injury got healed. The NBA, on the other hand, did not like this look and banned it from being worn to this day. When this was banned, the NBA stated that band-aids could be used for healing, but not for fashion. But they also stated later that breaking this ban was too small to get fined for. So technically, players could still rock their custom band-aids today without much punishment, which kind of defeats the purpose. But that was probably just a signature D-Wade thing. Athletic Propulsion Lab Sneakers 64 years after banning the Air Jordan 1s, the famous shoe that is so good it got banned from the NBA is none other than the Athletic Propulsion Lab Sneakers. I'm guessing by now, most of you guys have heard of this sneaker. But inside these sneakers, is a technology that absorbs a ton of kinetic energy and increases the vertical jump of anyone that uses the shoe by three to four inches. Now, this is one of those things where it's understandable why the NBA banned it. Imagine already insanely explosive players getting an added four inches on their vertical? Lethal to say the least. But obviously, unless all these players were able to wear the shoe, it would be an unfair competitive advantage. Branded haircuts. The NBA rulebook says that a player may not during any NBA game display any commercial, promotional, or charitable name mark logo or other identification including, but not limited to, on his body, in his hair, or otherwise. Well, Amon Schumpert is probably the reason why hair was mentioned in that particular rule. Back during his time on the New York Knicks, Schumpert decided to get the Adidas logo shaved into the back of his head. He had that cut for one game, and the league got involved. So, he basically had to cut a triangle in the back of his head to remove the logo. However, what's interesting is that at that time, the NBA's uniforms were made by Adidas. So why was having Adidas branding in his hair a problem? I guess rules are rules. Tinted Goggles In 2011, during a game against the Knicks, Dwayne Wade had a migraine and was very sensitive to light at this time. So he and the team decided he would wear light tinting glasses during the game. However, the NBA saw this as an issue because of the fact that players couldn't see D. Wade's eyes, which may give him an advantage. So shortly after the game, they banned the use of these glasses because it was suspected they gave him a competitive edge. 
Although it's not the best strategy to look at your opponent's eyes while guarding them, it may put some people at a disadvantage when they are guarding someone with their glasses on. Black Mask The signature black mask that everyone remembers has been worn over the years by stars like LeBron and Kyrie. There hadn't been any issues with masks for a while, but in 2014, LeBron wore a black carbon fiber mask while playing in a game to protect his broken nose. But after the game, the league asked LeBron to wear a clear mask, and they put a ban on the black one for good. No one really knows the definite reason for the ban, but considering what players have said, it seems that there are some disadvantages, along with the advantages, of wearing one. Branded Sleeves A more recent accessory banned in 2017 when Kelly Oubre wore a supreme shooting sleeve on his leg, while J.R. Smith wore the same one on his arm. Oubre wore this sleeve in the first half of a game against the Nets and was told to take it off at halftime, which he did without asking questions. Oubre did not understand the ban though, because this sleeve was actually a Nike and Supreme collaboration, and Nike is the sponsor of the NBA, so the ban definitely caused some questions to arise. Ninja Style Headbands In 2019, Jimmy Butler and many other players started wearing ninja style headbands. The league banned this accessory because of it being a safety hazard, which many people started to question because it seems unlikely that a ninja headband is unsafe. There's a lot of speculation, and many people believe that the NBA just doesn't like the look of it, similar to what happened with the do-rag many years ago, but no one is really sure. Do you think there will be more bands in the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. As the league continues to grow and evolve, fashion trends do as well, so it's likely possible that we'll all have more interesting disputes in the future. The current era of the league might seem a lot more rigid than prior ones, where external influences like hip-hop culture were somewhat allowed to be front and center. Now it seems that modern culture has somewhat been put in the background. The NBA has really carved their niche in the business world to where it's far more than a sport. Therefore, we have yet to see if modern conflicts and adjustments have much of anything to do with genuine safety of the league or if everything is strictly regarding the business sector. However, it's also worth mentioning that modern methods of advertising and garnering publicity are a lot more innovative and creative than in the past. So with that being said, will the NBA be open to adopting these modern marketing strategies to a large degree? Obviously, the NBA wants their image to be as perfect and professional as possible, being that they are the premier basketball league in the world, which is understandable. However, as time goes on, it'll be more interesting to see how the NBA approaches the strategy of blending professionalism with modernism. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to The Zone for all things NBA. And I'll catch you on the next one.